Do you think a Christian should profit from the sales of a liquor store? Do you think a Christian should profit from, now this is going to get hard, probably a lot of people are going to hate me, uh, I don't really care, but should Christians profit from Christian bookstores that are peddling and promoting false teaching? Are you going to be held accountable for that? Or what about the churches, and I use that term loosely, what about the churches and the pastors that are promoting a different message by following people like Rick Warren and the Purpose Driven Church, or Ed Young and uh, Joe Olstein and, you know, a host of other T.D. Jakes who, you know, he doesn't even know what salvation is. There are so many of these that are profiting from sin and corruption and greed and providing for the flesh of mankind to satisfy the desires of the flesh rather than catering to the flock of Jesus Christ and equipping them as saints to do God's good works. They're not saying, you know, you need to examine yourself and die daily in all areas of your life. But they're more concerned about how the traditions of men can be used to uh, get a large gathering of people, those people like to have their ears itched, and not confront their lifestyle or how they make money. It's all the way of Balaam. It's all greed. It's all money. In this town that Jesus, that, that these... Uh, pig herders belong to. They wanted nothing to do with him. And that's what we see today here in America. America Christi American Christianity has gone this way. They, they're, they're being the, the, the pig herders. The, we're supporting the world around us when we're supposed to be aliens and strangers. Don't you get it? When, we, when God says that we are to be holy, which means to be set apart, he really means it. And so for those out there that are peddling the word of God, how many preachers out there are selling their messages? Guys like Ed Young, Rob Bell, uh, you know, Paul Cain, all these people that supposedly, uh, Mike Bickle, all these people that charge money for their messages. Isn't that the way of Cain? Jesus said, freely you receive, now freely give. And then yet we have people like Joe Olstein that are, that are profiting millions and millions of dollars from books that they're writing that have absolutely nothing to do with God and his word except abuse it and misuse it. And they cater to the flesh, to the world. They don't preach the gospel of God. That's what this is about. This isn't just an account of saying, oh, Jesus casted out two demon-possessed men. He was confronting people. Remember, the word says that Jesus said, he, he stated that I have not come to bring peace but a sword. The word, the word of God is a two-edged sword. It, it judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. And it, either you are for God or you're against him. And that's the great thing about God's word, is that while that sword is two-edged, it can cut out the things that needs to be cut out, like a surgeon's scalpel. But it, it goes both ways, is that we can, we can use it as a tool to help rebuke and correct other believers in places that we've been and say, hey, I've been down that road, you don't want to do that. This is what God's word said. It cuts to the quick of the matter. But it should cut first in our own lives before we start cutting uh, into the problems of other people, like a surgeon. What we see here is that Satan's really smart. He's going to use and abuse God's word. He, he recognizes who Jesus is. But the greatest, I wouldn't say the greatest, one of the greater tricks that the enemy has is to make things appear like, you know, well, nope, you're coming against my livelihood. You know, we can't have nothing to do with that. You know, you're confronting against our sin, our everyday lives. Can't have none of that. 
Remember, God's word judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. It said the whole town went out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they pleaded with him to leave their region. Isn't that kind of like church that people will go to church and they'll they'll go there to see Jesus, to meet him, but they'll end up and they'll plead with him to leave their homes, to leave their lives, because they want to hold him at arm's distance. Yeah, as long as he's he's around and he's doing, but I don't want him to confront my life, my sin, my flesh. That's what we're talking about. How many of us are still tending pigs? How many of us are providing uh, the world and those around us who are in sin and are lost, providing them with support to continue on in their lifestyle. How do we do that? How many of us have never witnessed verbally the gospel of Jesus Christ to anybody, and yet you claim the name of Christ? How many have not done anything in their community for the home, the, the homeless, the poor, the hungry? Where you think that, well, I give my, my little tithe, my 10% to the, to the church, so I'm good to go. But the majority of that money, about 98% of that money, goes to keeping the lights on, paying the bills, the mortgages, secretaries, and has nothing to do with the gospel of God. How many of us are tending pigs instead of going out and doing what God wants us to do, which is His will? instead of ours.